respond extremely well to natural health care. Why, why would that be? Why would animals respond? Well, they to, have a skeleton too. Yeah, they have a like spine and nervous system, okay. They have, a, they have a digestive system that requires what? Healthy food, okay? So uh, animals require proper nutrition, properly functioning nervous system, and proper organ motion. So when the organs aren't moving, just like in people, they're not working right. So, and here's the thing, in animals, organs are basically in the same spot that they are in people, except that they're on all fours. So the, the liver's right under the ribs on the right side, spleen is on the left side, stomach is on the left side. It's the same place, basically, except they're on all fours. Um, let's get food real quick. Um, this is one of the best foods that you can get for your animals. It's called um, Nature's Domain Salmon and Sweet Potato from Costco. And uh, it's high in protein and minerals and very low in plant lectins. Now, um, most, if not all, dog and cat treats, they just aren't very healthy for dogs. They, they contain very inadequate <coughs> minerals, um, way too much plant-derived food, artificial ingredients. And what happens is, if there's too much plant-derived food for canines that are in cats that are designed really to eat high-protein diets and high and more of a, a, a raw food diet, those plant lectins will tear up their GI tract and give them allergies, okay? So um, uh, you, here's the things to avoid in animal food, and it's, it's really no different than the food we eat. Sugar, cheap cereal grain, meat byproducts, and some of those are just indigestible. Animals can't even digest them. Uh, uh, gluten, which develop, Animals can develop gluten allergies just like human beings. Artificial colors and flavors, I mean, most of you don't want those in your food. I, I certainly don't if I can help it. And chemical <laughs> preservatives, okay? Now, these are the foods with lectins in them, and you can't see that very well, but um, tomatoes, peppers, beans, things like that. There's a lot of people and a lot of animals that are sensitive to those. That, and dogs, especially in cats, animals that are generally designed to be carnivores don't do well with plant lectins. So let's talk about um, the most important part of what we're going to talk about tonight, and that's caring for the spine and nervous system of our animals. So animals can get subluxated, just like people. And chiropractors define the vertebral subluxation complex as a functional misalignment of a vertebra, limiting, limiting the motion of a joint, causing irritation around the nerves. Okay, so this is exactly the same thing in animals. If a subluxation exists, the animal loses the normal flexibility of its spine and affects the performance and resulting in stiffness and mu muscular tension. This usually doesn't happen like, it, sometimes it appears like it happens overnight, but in animals, this happens over time. Animals generally don't get lame overnight. It happens over time, then one day they're not walking right. You go, well, what happened to my animal? Well, it's been subluxated for a long time. Um, reduced mobility between two vertebrae can affect the nerves that leave the spinal cord between the, these, uh, uh, that leave the spinal, that the nerves that leave the spinal cord between the adjacent vertebrae. The resulting nerve interference causes changes in the function of the health and the tissue innervated by the impaired nerve. So here's normal nerve flow, there's impaired nerve flow, it can manifest anywhere in the spine. Now, let me just, uh, you wanna stand up for just a minute? And just hold your dog, if you can. Turn around, yeah. So if you look at, like, for example, a canine spine, you know, it comes down here. Oh, it's okay. It comes down, and it, and it, then you have this, this, this sort of angle here, 
where it comes, then it angles in the back. This is a part of the canine spine that can really get subluxated is right here. Now, the, the spinal cord that comes through there, there's a tract called the rubrospinal tract. That tract actually innervates the back legs. So in a, in, a, in a canine, what can happen is that this area getting pinched can affect the back legs. Now you wouldn't think that. You'd think that if the back legs are affected, it's gotta be back here. A lot of times it's not, it's right in there. Now with a horse, the horse it's up here, okay? So with a horse, a horse can be subluxated up here and it can affect its back legs. And, and you know, in, a, in our minds, we don't think like that. We think, well, if the back legs are affected, it's gotta be somewhere back here. In a dog, it's almost always <laughs> this spot right here, right at the base of the neck, and in a horse, right up here. Okay, good, you can sit. Now, I'm gonna adjust this dog in just a minute, and I'm gonna, this, if this one will let me adjust him. She <laughs> warned me about him, so. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so when your animal begins acting strange, it might be a strong indicator of spinal issues affecting the brain. And when we re, when we adjust an animal, or really when we adjust a human, what we're doing is really resetting the brain. So we now have absolute scientific proof of that, that adjusting the spine literally resets brain function. Now, getting your dog adjusted periodically can prevent this issue right here, where they, they have to, uh, uh, the back legs just don't work anymore. The problem is, 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 is in animals, it's, it's like people, we, we tend not to think there's a problem, or not to, to really look for problems until there's a really big problem. And you know we you know we see it I see it all the time in the office you know people don't come in and they don't say hey would you would you X-ray my neck and see if I have a good curve in my neck <laughs> nobody does that they come in when they're in pain okay and so people wait till their animal's back legs don't work and they go well we need to take them to the vet well that may have been this may have been coming on for a long time so. Here's the autonomic nervous system in a person. Well, dogs and, and animals have this too. So problems in the spine of, a, of an animal will affect their organs just like it does people. So um, when we give a dog or an animal a spinal adjustment, the neurological short circuit is restored back to the on position so that normal nerve flow can be restored. Now, the, the kind of adjusting that I use really low force on animals just like people where it's impossible to hurt the animal I've never seen an animal hurt by what I do so we, we let me just adjust the, the let me just adjust this dog and I'll show you how I do it rather than going through this so you want to put him up here you're on the spotlight you did good yeah so this is Lizzie yep and I've adjusted this animal before, and, and it's an older dog, and it's got some problems with uh, front leg, that it just wobbles a lot when it walks. And so, uh, uh, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to help Lizzie or not, but we're gonna, we're gonna try, and sometimes these dogs need to be adjusted multiple times before, especially when they're older. How old is Lizzie? 15 and a half. Yeah, 15 and a half. So we're gonna, I use this instrument here. It's very, very gentle. And so we're just gonna start out right here. Okay, Lizzie, you have to go. We're gonna adjust this, his atlas, her at, atlas. There we go. Is that the same equipment that you use on a human? No. I, I, I don't go back and forth. Uh, 
I use something similar on a person, but it's not this. Not that particular. Not, not this. No, no, not no, this no, one. Not that, but. So, as you can see, it's a little bit like adjusting a two-year-old. <laughs> they don't uh, hold very still. Some do. So we're going to go right down the spine, and what you're going to see is when you, when when there's a subluxation. You're gonna see the dog, can you see the dog kind of jump? Yeah. yeah. That's an indicator that there's a subluxation at that point, nerve interference. And they don't, you're not hurting them at all. In fact, animals tend to like this when they get used to it. And this dog here, which I've adjusted before, um, tends to like being adjusted. I mean, it's, it's easier now. She's easier now than she was. Uh, so we're going to come right back up here and we go, we take, we do three different passes. Come on. Oh, there we go. Yeah. And the thing that, that they really get scared of the noise more than anything else. And I thought if they could make an instrument that didn't make any noise, it would really help get these animals um, better. Now, there's some horses that I've tried to adjust with this instrument that wouldn't let me because of the noise. Mm -hmm. And if a horse, a full-grown horse, is not going to let you adjust it, you're not going to adjust it. <laughs> okay, no, they're not. It's just not going to happen unless you want to get hurt. Well, she's doing great. Yeah, I'm surprised. You can tell that she does have a hard time standing. Yeah, she does. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they don't like the slick surface either. And the reason I, I keep them on the slick surface is because I don't want them grabbing it and then running off on me. <laughs> See, I can do this on a, on a dog just as well as a person. Okay. Okay, Lizzie, one more time. One more time, honey. Okay, good. So another thing that you can do, you can take Lizzie off there now, is um, and I'm going to uh, show you this here, is as well as adjusting them. Uh, so most animals will actually move better after you adjust them. Not all animals, but most of them will. Um, here's some of the uh, that here's some of the canine cases that resolve well with with adjusting acute disc disease. It you know it doesn't involve involve paralysis. Um, ventral or lateral flexion of the spine not involving the central nervous system disturbances or traumatic injury. So you know when they they bring their head to one side and they can't straighten it out. That's an example. Um, Shifting or foreleg lameness, unilateral rear leg lameness, um, and degenerative myelopathy, which is basically degenerative disc disease. Uh, canine wobbler's disease, hip dysplasia. In, in felines, wry neck 
for anterior cervical disease where the cat just holds her head like this all the time. Classic chiropractic case. Um, uh, now here's the things to avoid after you adjust an animal. So you shouldn't put them in a cage and rest them. They need to move around. They need to walk around. They need to go outside and go to the bathroom. Uh, stairs, you need to avoid stairs. Um, they, they need to avoid jumping off couches. And the worst thing is, is jumping in and out of cars, especially from front seat to back seat after you've adjusted them. They need to just calm down, put them in the back seat on the floor and let them rest. Um, here's some of the other things, the visceral things that can be helped with chiropractic, animal chiropractic. Inflammatory bowel disease, hypothyroid kidney disease, dermatitis, allergies, and even food allergies. And with horses, acute and chronic lameness, gait abnormalities, lack of neck flexibility. I was adjusting a horse for a while um, out in West Lincoln, and he just had this chronic cough, this horse. And after, I don't know, I think I adjusted it four or five times, the cough went away. It's fine didn't cough anymore, okay? Uh, you know, in horses, hot disease, stifle disease, which is the knee, and then the lower part of the leg, um, the fetlock and pastern, a lot of times these areas get subluxated and they get inflamed, and lasering them and adjusting them, can those areas and adjusting the spine can really help a horse a lot. Colic, ulcers, allergies, um, edema, head shaking, and coughing are all things that, that chiropractic does very well in horses. They don't need, they don't always need all these pharmaceuticals. Now in bulls, um, just adjusting a bull, I've never adjusted a bull, okay? Uh, they can be tricky, all right? But you can increase semen production in a bull by 10 to 15% by adjusting them. Now that is money in the pocket of the owner of the bull, okay? Just by adjusting them, you can do that. Um, now, let's talk about low-level laser. Um, Frequency-specific low-level laser can really accelerate healing. Um, low-level laser basically increases the effect of healing in the tissue at a very, at a very cellular level. So, um, it in, low level laser enters a tissue, alters cell membrane per permeability, is absorbed by the mitochondria, which are the energy producing parts of the cell, and creates physiological changes. That's how laser works in, in animals and in humans. Um, so the effects of laser, they rapid cell growth, faster wound healing, increased metabolic activity, um, reduce scar tissue formation and uh, increase vascular activity so it, it helps grow blood vessels into the area so it can heal. Stimulated or yeah, stimulated nerve function uh, will speed the process of nerve cell reconnection to bring numb areas back to life. Uh, it increases macrophages, which are the uh, uh, the cells that, that kill and attack bacteria. And so laser does all of those things. And the combined effects of VOM and low-level laser produces a very powerful healing combination in animals as it does in people. So uh, we're going to, let's see if your dog will let me adjust it. That's a he, right? She. She. Yeah. Okay, what's her name? I mean, a he. Fanny. He. Okay. And does he have any problems? Not that I know of. Okay, so it's, it's sort of a maintenance adjustment. Okay, buddy. You okay? You okay with me? All right. You want me to take this out? He's a Nebraska fan. Okay. <laughs> yeah. well, there we go. Yeah, just go ahead and take that off. There we go. Okay. Woo! Oh, we don't just slide. Slippery off. table. Yeah. Okay.
Okay, yeah, just yeah, let's just move the table. Can you just come can you come around here? There we go. Okay, we're just gonna come in here and just there we go. Very subluxated in the lower, lower spine. How old your dog? Oh, you're such a good boy. Yeah. Arlen, how old is he? 13. 13. Okay, let's see. We get, there we go. It's all right. We're not going to hurt you. Let's see. Let me get up in here. There we go. them once or twice they get pretty used to me and they come in and they're pretty good uh, you okay huh? I think so. <clears throat> All right. we have big dogs that yeah. have come in and back there and just laid down on the floor after and they get to know um, <laughs> yeah. yes and they'll just lay there and let him do the adjustments yeah okay can we finish on you huh so when we finish it, yeah let's just oh. finish this there we go. He's going fast, sweetie. He's going fast. <laughs> yeah. He should be okay. But he's shaking. Yeah, they get pretty scared. They're not used to that. Okay. Yeah. That's two passes. That's probably good. Okay. Yeah, I like to go three. Thank but, you. Can yeah. You Actually, she was better than what I thought she was going to be. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I'm afraid she's going to bite me. I've been bitten before. So, that's basically how I adjust animals, okay? And um, not all of them are, are that squirmy, okay? Some of them just, like Carmen says, just lay down and let me work on them. Do you have any questions about, about anything that, about animal adjusting or animal chiropractic? So now, after you've done these two dogs, um, what are we going to see? Are we going to see anything? Well, with, if your dog doesn't have any issues, right? Okay, so you may not see anything. Now, it might be that your dog has more energy. It might be that you notice that he just moves differently. Oh, okay. Or it might be that this is just a maintenance adjustment. Because you, your dog was pretty subluxated from about the middle of his back down. Okay. okay. Now, this dog here does have issues, and I've adjusted it before. And uh, I don't know if I'm gonna get this dog better or not, okay? A lot of the dogs that I adjust are, do get better. This is a pretty old dog, has some neurological things going on, and I don't know. 
I don't know if that we're going to get this keep this dog from limping anymore or not. So my goal with animals is to prevent what's going on with this with Lizzie here. In other words, if we can actually prevent them from getting to this point, and you can, if they get adjusted periodically, the vet that taught me this technique, who's taught all over the country, said that you can extend the life of an animal by 30% if you just get adjusted periodically. So like, you know, four, five, six times a year. You know, at least four times a year, I would say. You can extend your dog's life and you can extend their health. In other words, they're gonna be a lot healthier. And so we don't have to wait till they get to the point where, you know, they're, they're, not, they're not well. I think and, it would be nice if the veterinarian would say, Notice that there's a lot of being limping or, you know, um, maybe they can suggest a uh, adjustment because mine never did, and they they knew this um, several months before I brought it here. Well, some do. Some vets will will do it. Some oh, vets do. do refer to me. Um, most of the time, it's after they've spent a lot of money on the of dog. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because we all love our animals yeah. so much. And so, so would this dog be in pain when he walks? Is he in pain? I don't think so. She doesn't seem like she is. Oh, okay. And I don't, I, I honestly, I don't let her go outside like she used to. Um, I never let her go downstairs by herself. Uh, and as far as jumping off the bed, that's, no, she doesn't do that. Yeah, it's really bad for, for dogs yeah, to do that. Yeah, I don't, I don't do that. She's really bad. I pick her up, she wants up on the bed, I'll pick her up and I'm like, don't, don't, don't. And she'll go to, towards the end of the bed and I'm like, you went down? And she's like, mm. <laughs> And so I pick her up and I put her down. But I really think that as a, um, the veterinarian here, and I'm sorry, I can't remember. Dr. Fernover, Paul Fernover. Yes, thank you. Yeah, it's all right. <laughs> I'm sorry. I feel so bad. But okay. um, if I had to come, you know, even six months prior, she probably would be limping now. Yeah. Yeah. If we can, if we can get them before their nervous system is damaged, then um, you can really make a big difference. But you know, this, the same thing is true in people. You know, mm -hmm. when people come to me and they're so stoved up they can't even move their head, and I've got a patient like that right now, he can barely move. I mean, you're, you're not, you're talking about some really long-term care, and you're not gonna get quick results on somebody like that. And um, uh, that's the pro same thing with animals. Most of the time when people bring me their animals, I ask how old they are. You know, they're usually 12 to 15, you know, and that's, you know, I it's, you know, I might be able to extend their life a little bit, but, uh, you know, when you're dealing with an older animal, it's 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 a little bit tougher. Like with your dog, your dog doesn't have any issues, so I, I'd, I'd get that dog adjusted at least, at least once every three months. Oh. Yeah, at least once every three months. Okay. So would it be a good He's idea? pretty calm right now. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Would it be a good idea if we started bringing, you know, like if we had a, um, like say for instance I got another dog, a newer dog after she passes, would it be a good idea for me to bring her in to maybe a year and see how she is? Sure. Get her adjusted. Yeah. So when is the earliest when you adjust a dog? I've adjusted puppies. Oh, you have? Yeah. Yeah. Adjusted puppies. So you can, it, just like you can adjust babies. Yeah. And so, um, uh, you know, about every, you know, they're a puppy, but every four months, I would get them, bring them in and get them adjusted. Because they're gonna, I mean, they tear around, they fall down, they do things, and they'll get subluxated, but that may not show up for a long time. And so if you can prevent that, then, then why not, you sure. know? And it's just, again, it's the same way with people. Uh, you can prevent, you know, if you can get somebody before, like I have families that bring their kids in to see me, whether they're sick or not. I just saw four of them today. Uh, kids were fine. There just wasn't a thing wrong with them. It's just preventative, you know? And their mother tells me that they're the healthiest kids of any of the families that she knows. 
And I've been seeing those kids for years. I mean, I've seen them, I watch them grow up, basically, and they're taller than I am now, every one of them. <laughs> That's not hard. <laughs> That's not difficult. So uh, uh, it's the same way with dogs. You know, if you can get them young, adjust them periodically, uh, you know, you can save your, yourself money and a lot of heartache with a lot of problems with their health. And feed them and feed them the right kind of food. You know, don't feed them treats that are full of chemicals because mm -hmm. yeah, their bodies don't do well with that. Good. Any other questions? Okay. Good. Yeah. Very interesting.